If error formula sounds alarming, actually very useful. Let's take a look. If you're working with spreadsheets a lot, it's likely you're working with lots of data. Um, maybe now you're starting to introduce some new formulae, maybe some of the other ones you've seen in this series. As you go along, you will find that sometimes an error is inevitable. And what do I mean by an error? Well, the annoying NA sign that comes up in a cell when the formula isn't quite working right. If you're anything like me, a bit of a spreadsheet perfectionist, it isn't a good thing. So what can we do to stop this? Well, one way is to use the if error formula. Let's see how it works. I've created a spreadsheet here to log student names in column G, the marks they're receiving in column H, and the grade that their mark equates to in column I. Now I've sorted these students in order of marks, so you can see that the student with the highest mark appears at the top, and then the students uh, go down in order of mark. Now I've used a kind of um, education type example with students and marks, but this could be anything really. It could be some kind of inventory list for your business, or some kind of stock list. Anywhere where you have a table of information, this kind of technique is going to be helpful for you. Over in column D, I've created a mechanism for the user to be able to enter a student name in cell D7 and for that student's rank to appear in cell D8. So if we change cell D7 to student 77, then the rank 1 should appear. If we change cell D7 to student 3, who is ranked 5th, then the number 5 will appear. That's how it works. I've achieved this using a match formula, and if you'd like to know how to implement a match formula, have a look at our match formula video. Now this is all working pretty well, it's saving the user a lot of time, and it allows the user to instantly find where a student is ranked in the class. However, at the moment there's no provision for errors, so if the user were to type in a student name that doesn't exist in the list, then we'd get the usual Excel error. Let's have a look. Let's try student 101, which I know is not in the list. And as we can see, the Excel error message has appeared. Now this hash value not available error for me is particularly annoying. And it has a kind of unsettling effect on the user because it shows that, it shows that things aren't working well and it shows that something's broken maybe. It, it conveys that feeling. So this particular error message we should try to avoid as far as we can. So how could we avoid that error? Well, one way would be to implement some kind of data validation in cell D7. For example, we could look at implementing something like a drop-down menu. And if you want to know about drop-down menus, have a look at our drop-down menu video. A drop-down menu would validate the data before it goes in, so it would stop the user typing in something like student 101. Only values that appear in column G, so actual student names, would be able to appear in this cell. However, a drop-down list with 100 values or more is not particularly helpful for the user. It's not going to save them a lot of time because they're going to have to scroll up and down that list. So data validation in the form of a drop-down list probably isn't going to work too well. So what could we use instead of data validation to manage errors in this situation? Let's have a look at the if error formula. We can implement an if error formula in cell D8 and we're going to envelop the existing match formula in an if error formula. The idea behind if error is that if this formula returns an error, instead of showing the usual standard Excel error, show a customized error message, or do something apart from just showing the error. So it's a good way of managing this Excel error message. That might sound a little bit complicated, so let's see how it works. So I'm going to go into cell D7, double click, and I can now see the existing formula. I'm going to position the cursor after the equals sign and type in if 
error and open brackets. As you can see, as usual, Excel is asking for certain information and giving us prompts to communicate the information it's looking for. First, it wants to know the value. And in this case, we're going to use the formula that was in the cell before. OK, so we're going to position our cursor after the match formula and hit the comma key. As you can see, Excel is now asking for the next part of the formula. So it's accepted our match formula as the value elements of the if error formula. We've hit the comma key and now it's asking for value if error. So it's asking what to do if this formula returns an error. So first, let's say, let's say do nothing. So I'm going to put two speech marks here and that will display nothing in the cell and then close the bracket. So we're told the formula a value and then what to do if that value or in this case that formula returns an error which is to show these to show nothing effectively so let's hit the enter key and see what happens I'm going to change this back to student 77 which should show us a rank of one and then change this to student 101 let's see what happens okay as you can see the cells displaying nothing this is because the if error formula has realized that match is returning an error, but instead of displaying the value not available error message that we saw at the start, it's done this. So it's, uh, it's done nothing in the cell. So there's nothing appearing in the cell. So that's good because we're no longer seeing the error message that we wanted to avoid. However, it's not particularly helpful for the user because we haven't communicated to the user what is wrong. So can we go one step formula, to, one step further rather to make this formula really good and useful for the user? So let's double click again. And I'm going to go to the value if error components. And instead of having nothing display in the cell, let's have a useful informative message display here. So something like student not found would communicate to the user that the student name they've inputted is not in the list. So I've just typed in student, not found that. Remember, I still have speech marks around it so that it displays as text in the cell. And I'm gonna hit the enter key, okay. I think this is really good now. Let's try something else, student 200. As we can see, because student 200 isn't in the list, the match formula is returning an error. And because we have a, an if error formula around the match formula, the if error formula is returning our custom error message, which is student not found. Okay, that might sound a little bit complicated, but certainly try it yourself and try to get good at it. It's going to make your spreadsheet robust and it's going to help you avoid those annoying error messages. Okay, so I hope you're able to follow that video and uh, it was helpful for you. I'd be really interested to hear if you've managed to implement the if error formula in your work or any of the other formulae in this series. So if you're watching on YouTube, why not leave a comment or find us on Facebook or on Twitter. Now you'll see on the screen some links to the other videos in this series, so definitely take a look at those. In the meantime, keep working on your spreadsheets. I'll see you in the next video.